Now, I want you to look carefully at this really awesome and incredibly intricate demo up there. Ready? Go. Whoa! Let's see that again. It is in slow motion. All right, so <clears throat> what if the object both rotates and translates? How are we going to calculate its kinetic energy? What speed are we going to use for the various points? I think it's clear that not all points on that wheel are going to be moving at the same speed. In fact, almost none of them are, well, it's complicated, right? What's the speed, what's the speed of the point that's in contact with the ground? Go back. So the point, okay, maybe I should put it this way. Which part of the wheel is moving fastest? Top, right? How fast, if the, if the whole wheel is going to the right at V, how fast is the top moving? If the, whole, if, the, if the center of the wheel is moving at V and it's, and it's rolling without slipping, then, well, whoop. wow, that was radical. Um, <clears throat> then the center is moving at this way at speed V and it's rotating around at omega, so the top would be moving at the speed of the center plus the speed with respect to the center of omega r. So the top would be moving at so if it rolls without slipping and v was equal to omega r then the top would be moving at speed 2v. And any place, if we analyze along this line, at any place along that line, then we could just add VCM and the extra bit would correspond to the radius times omega. But omega is equal to V over the radius of the wheel. So the fraction that you are up from the middle is the fraction of the whole speed of the center of mass that you gain. And so the whole velocity profile will look like that. So at the bottom, the bottom is moving backwards with respect to the center at omega r. The center is moving to the right at speed v. The back is moving to the, or the bottom is moving to the left at speed v. You add those up and you get at rest. So the bottom point is instantaneously at rest. The top point is moving at twice the speed of the center. What about some crazy, you know, position over there? Well, it gets the center's translation, but it's also moving with respect to the center. So it would be moving this way with respect to the center, and I have to add up those two and get... This is going to be complicated. we got to hope that there's a better way than having to integrate over this whole bloody disk. <clears throat> What's that? Let's hope there's a useful theorem. All right. So I want to not even worry for the moment about rigid bodies. I just want to worry about a bunch of junk, a bunch of mass points that are whizzing around in various ways, and just use the definition of kinetic energy.
that the kinetic energy, and this is going to be in the center of mass frame, so the total momentum is zero. The kinetic energy is just the sum over all the particles of m sub i over 2 v sub i squared. Whoops. Except that I want to write that to make it very clear that we're going to remember that each one is moving in three dimensions and so has a vector velocity, but it's the magnitude squared that we're interested in. And we want to relate that. Suppose that that center of mass frame is actually moving to the right compared to the lab, and it's moving to the right at speed v center of mass. So So now, what is the velocity of every particle? Well, in this frame, I have to sum 1 half m sub i, but, whoops, but the velocity of every particle, did I put a prime? I did. This should have a prime. We're going to use a prime to indicate the center of mass frame. So this prime here is not Amazon Prime. This is center of mass frame. So V prime sub i, but then every particle then gets an additional velocity component. We don't have to use the relativistic velocity transformation. Aren't you relieved? No, no, no. OK. Yes, be relieved. OK. And then we need to take that squared. OK. Is everyone clear on that? I just, if the whole thing is translating to the right at speed vcm, then every particle's velocity gets that additional component. And we now have to add up all the velocities squared. So we're going to use, what are we going to use to? Simplify this. How do we express the magnitude squared of a vector? Dot product, right? So this is equal to the sum on i of 1 half m sub i, v prime i plus v center of mass, dot v prime i plus v center of mass, OK, how many terms? I, I think that's really only going to give us three terms, because two of them will be the same. But here we go. So the sum on i of 1 half m sub i, v prime i dot v prime i is just v prime i squared. That's just the magnitude squared of v prime i. The second term dotted into the second term is just v squared for the center of mass. And now I have twice the cross term, v prime i dot v center of mass. But luckily, that last term disappears. And it's not, there's much rejoicing, but I don't want it to be magic. I want you to realize why it disappears. So let's now rewrite each of these. Yeah, I think that motor just got killed, which is good, I guess. OK, so the first one looks like sum on i of 1 half m sub i v sub i prime squared, which is a fancy way of just writing the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame. It's not even fancy. It is just the center of mass kinetic energy. So this part is, 
the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame. What about this sum? Well, I can pull VCM squared out. It's a constant as far as the sum is concerned. So the sum just gives me sum of all the masses. So I get 1 half all the mass times V center of mass squared. That is the kinetic energy of a single mass point moving at VCM. It has all the mass of the system. On the, the last ter term, I want to pull out of the sum the 2 and the VCM, so I get plus VCM dotted into the sum on I of M sub I V sub I prime. Well, the 2 canceled the half. But it's going to work out that 2 times a half times 0 is the same thing as 2 times 0 and so on. Because this sum in the center of mass frame is 0. That's what makes it the center of mass frame. Has no momentum, no net momentum. So we're left with this very beautiful result that the kinetic energy in, of, the, of the system that's moving, that's whose center of mass is moving, can be expressed as just the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, <coughs> or put another way, the kinetic energy, yeah, the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, plus put all the mass at the center of mass, have it move the way the center of mass is moving, and take that kinetic energy. Okay? Are we good? So the cross terms disappeared. And it, yes, sir? Uh, why is it that the sum of mi v prime i is zero on the right of the space after the second How come the this? Yeah. Like you have something that looks very similar to elements to the left, but I'm not sure if that's different. Ah, excellent. He says, why does this one go away, whereas this one doesn't? So in this one, I'm adding up v sub i prime squared multiplied by m sub i. So these are all positive definite. There's no way that can sum to 0 unless they're all 0. right? But over here, it's the vector to the first power. And in the center of mass frame, what, well, what would be this sum? Well, this is the sum of the momenta in the center of mass frame, right? It's just the sum of all the momenta. So this would be p total in the center of mass in center of mass frame. And that's 0. That's how we cooked up the center of mass frame to begin with. Good question. So in voids, um, the kinetic energy in the lab frame is the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame plus the kinetic energy of all the mass moving with the center of mass velocity, which is just what it says in more compact notation in the yellow box. Are you ready? You're going to go ahead even if I'm going to go ahead. E yeah, you got it. OK, wait, there's supposed to be. Oh, yeah, there was the nifty animation. Did you miss it? I did too. All right, once more. Please. Oh, that was exciting. Okay. Yes.